Matt here with Atlas Precision Consulting. Today's video, we're going to talk about some basics of order entry. I will not be able to cover everything in this video, so we'll do some other videos in the future. Uh, but for right now, let's just start with the basics. Uh, I'm on the order entry screen. Uh, the first field is order number. Obviously, if this is a new order, we do not have a number, so we're going to move down. Now, you could go to customer ID, find your customer, but then if they have multiple ship twos, you're also going to have to go to the ship to ID field to find them. I prefer to start off with going directly to the ship to for searching. Uh, so I'm going to search customer. The customer name is Bob Jones, and you can see that it's searching customer name too, as well as the ship to name. Uh, and I can come in here and you can say, oh, it's my Ackworth address. I start typing in the city name and it narrows it down for me. Now the, the upside to this is when I select my ship to, it knows what customer ID is assigned to that. So it's just one less time I have to search. Uh, sales location is based on your user settings. Uh, contact ID, if, if it is blank, there either, either is none or there are more than two. Um, you'll have to enter one if you want one on the order. I'm not really going to go into job too much. It's just uh, another field for more information. PO is pretty self-explanatory. Customer gives you a purchase order number. This is where you put it. Uh, your system may have it required, or you can also go into a customer setting and make it so it's required for them, even if it's not required for your company overall. Uh, order date, pretty self-explanatory. Required date, that's the date when you're going to be uh, expecting this to leave your source location. Uh, contract number, if you do not have this set up, uh, or this customer set up to allow contracts on all orders, uh, you would have to put a contract number in this field uh, to have it give the specific pricing. Um, quote, uh, this checkbox is extremely important. If you are somebody that enters a lot of quotes, you're going to want to have your uh, customer settings, uh, or excuse me, your user settings to default you to always having this quote box enabled. Um, you can go from a quote to an order, but you can't go from an order to a quote. So if you start entering in and you forgot to check that quote box, you're going to have to clear it and start over enabling that quote box. I recommend maybe moving it near the order number just so it stands out a little bit more to you. Uh, real quick, the crate transfer, the crate PO checkboxes, even if those are enabled, they don't do anything unless the disposition of the line matches up to one of those two. So that would be a T for transfer or a D and an S uh, for the create uh, PO, uh, which we'll cover in a different video. We're going to go down here to the items real quick. I've covered uh, entering items in some other videos, so I'm not really going to go too deep on the item part of this. I just wanted to put something on here and start hitting a couple basics. Uh, ship to, we're going to cover this in another video, but you can, uh, if your company allows it, you can hit create ship tos on the fly. Uh, so this is where you would do it. You wouldn't have a ship to ID and you'd fill it out. But again, we'll cover that in a later video. Ship info. This is good information like your delivery instructions, your carrier, things like that. Now, I do recommend maybe doing a Dyna change on that first tab to carry over, especially delivery instructions and carrier. Uh, so it prevents your users from having to bounce back and forth between multiple tabs. Uh, docu document links, uh, we will do videos on. We've already done videos on order notes. Uh, the last one I really want to call an attention to in this video is the front counter. Front counter is essentially your print or email options. Um, depending on, on what's protected and whatnot, you can also create an invoice or print an invoice. Uh, some companies choose to uh, protect that with Dyna changes. They don't want invoices created on the fly. Um, this is where you can choose to email. Now, if you don't have a contact on here and you try to email, it's going to default to uh, the email account set up for your customer. Uh, if you picked a contact, it would obviously default to that contact's email if they have one. Um, but you would just simply check what you want to print and you would hit save. And that's your basics of order entry. Again, we could spend a lot of time going through everything that's in an order entry screen. Uh, if there are particular questions you guys have, leave a comment down below. Or if you want to see videos on other topics, related or not related, also put a comment down below. Make sure you like and subscribe. And as always, Atlas will be here for your P21 needs. Thanks, guys.